Hey everybody! You may remember that a few years ago, I made a video all about the records that I like to listen to around the fall Halloween season, and I had a lot of fun sharing all the things I love to spin with you. Well, today, I've made a new video with even more records that I've picked up since then that will easily go alongside the ones I mentioned in the previous video. If you didn't already know from some of my other social media platforms, I recently started working at a local record store called Spin Me Round Records and have been having a lot of fun with it. Working in that kind of atmosphere has also inspired me to continue making videos with my recent pickups and thoughts on everything. Since I've picked up so many things since then, I thought it would be way more fun if I tried separating these videos by genre and other fun categories. So with that said, let's go through them. Let's begin with a known classic, the Ghostbusters movie soundtrack. Yes, I have wanted a nice copy of this one for years, but only came across a decent one just recently at my local record store. The theme song is absolutely iconic, and this whole franchise, both the movies and the cartoon series, were a big part of my childhood, so I am thrilled to finally have this one to blast around the house. Honestly, if the theme song to this isn't blasting through your head, were you even a part of the 80s? I'll admit this next one was a bit of an impulse buy, but if this cartoon means as much to you as it did me, I think you'll understand. For the classic It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown cartoon, we have this awesome shaped pumpkin vinyl to go with it. Yes, a pumpkin. What? Despite being a 12 inch record, this one actually plays at 45 RPM. Now I have heard a few complaints about the sound quality on this release, so I wanted to address that, because I researched this myself. It is true that this is not the best sounding version out there, but there's a reason for that. See, unlike the Christmas special, which went through a more traditional studio recording process, the Halloween soundtrack was mysteriously not given the same treatment, and as such, the music here is basically lifted from the TV special itself, i.e. the same sources as most other releases, including this one. That would mean that the sound would include sound effects from the TV special in places where they couldn't otherwise just get the music itself. There is unfortunately no original master to work with in this case, so we're basically stuck with what we've got until the end of time. With that said, it's far from unlistenable, and the sound effects you do end up hearing from the special itself don't really ruin the experience at all, in my opinion. Besides, you're getting this for the sake of having it on this awesome orange pumpkin-shaped vinyl, right? <laughs> and on that front, it definitely delivers. One word of advice, though. If you do decide to purchase this, go buy a proper record sleeve for it, which I am also going to do shortly. This plastic case simply doesn't protect the record at all, and there's no way to keep something like this stored. They obviously did it to show off what they were selling here pumpkin, but it is up to us to actually help preserve this thing, right? Next up is something that was never actually on vinyl before up until this point, so I was pretty excited to see it come out. It is Andrew Gold's Halloween Howls. There were two versions of this album released, one in standard black vinyl and the other an indie exclusive orange vinyl limited to 2,000 copies, as you can see by the hype sticker up there. Let's zoom in on a little bit. I went with the orange one, and at the time of this recording, I'm pretty sure my store still has uh, at least one or more in stock if you happen to be looking. So what is this album and why is it so special to people? Well, Andrew Gold was in the music business ever since the 70s, helping shape the sound of 70s rock and soft rock as we know it. He worked with everyone from Art Garfunkel to Linda Ronstadt to Freddie Mercury and even wrote the song Thank You For Being A Friend, which would later get covered by Cindy Fee and of course become the theme song of The Golden Girls. Small world, right? But in 1996, Gold wanted to create more music for the Halloween season, which he felt was kind of lacking up until that point. And thus, the album was born, and it is great! But it didn't really catch on in any kind of major way until around 2010, when sharing of the songs through online videos, like uh, Spooky Scary Skeletons being played to a video of the skeleton dance, for example, would help reignite some interest in this title. The Undead Tombstone remix of that certainly helped, too. In fact... It is a bonus track on here at the very end. Ha <laughs> ha! If you were uncertain about wanting to get it before now, I bet that'll be the thing that gets you the most interested. <laughs> and here's what the orange vinyl looks like for those curious about the indie exclusive version. They were not kidding when they said neon orange. And that looks gorgeous. Also, gotta love that new artwork. 
Bam. The last one here is not Halloween themed per se, but I think it still happens to fit the mood really well. This is the third and unfortunately final album of the Swedish metal band In Solitude called Sister. I first remember discovering and listening to this band around the same time that Ghost had just put out their first album and thinking to myself, what the heck is going on in Sweden? <laughs> All I know about the recording process here is that the band went into a forest and recorded songs based off what inspired them there. And while it does not sound like any kind of forest I'd ever want to visit, the music is pretty solid here. The genre is like an interesting blend of goth rock, metal more akin to heavy metal and new wave of British heavy metal, and even a post-punk level of rawness. The band's singer, Pele Amen also reminds me of Nick Cave in his earlier days, if Nick Cave wanted to sing about more evil stuff. In fact, I'm just going to call him Evil Nick Cave going forward, why not? While I won't say that the album is terribly unique in any way, it did end up being very dark, atmospheric, and most importantly, memorable. And I think songs like Death Knows Where and Pallid Hands work perfectly with the kind of tone and atmosphere that you look for at this time of year. And I was just as surprised as you to come around and make it a recommendation here, and I hope that you all give it a chance based off that too. I haven't even heard the band's first two albums yet, but I'm definitely definitely gonna go and check them out now that I've found this. It's a shame that they ended up disbanding around 2015, I believe, but at least their legacy will still live on here. I was originally going to use that one in my next video, which is going to be all about metal pickups, but since this one fit the spirit so well and with Halloween so close, I figured that would be a perfect way to close this one out. Between this and the records featured in my last video, I hope you'll agree that I've got a nice little Halloween playlist going on here, and maybe you'll be inspired to pick up some of these yourself now. Well, that's going to do it for me and these new picks. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Have you picked up any new records for the season? Maybe you picked up one of these, John Carpenter's new Halloween soundtrack, or something else. Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay safe out there and have a great Halloween weekend.